Hey everybody, uh, Brad the Guitologist here with another exciting video for you. Um, this is a guitar that was that's a buddy's of mine and, and uh, he brought it over wanting me to put it under the saddle um, piezo pickup in, which I have already done. I skipped all this stuff and and frankly I wasn't even gonna uh, film any of this because you know this is something that probably most people if you don't already know how to do it there's probably plenty of resources out there for for how to do this um, I did end up installing him a kill switch um, in addition uh, which we decided to put here um, but whenever I put the strings back on uh, you know I, I filed down the saddle because as you know you, when you put a piezo on you're gonna have some extra thickness so you have to file uh, the saddle down. Well, I filed it down to where I thought it should be. Uh, measure, use my feeler gauges and everything in the correct way to feel the you know the distance from the string uh, down to the fret at the twelfth fret, which usually is a pretty good indicator that you've got this correct. Uh, so I did that, and all that was correct. And then we get we're, we were getting some buzzing on the G string, uh, just kind of up in this area mainly. And um, it's like, well, you know, I'll keep it overnight and figure out what's going on with this. Well, here, I'll show you. Look here. See if you can spot what's going on. Uh, look at the G string there. Do you see the string? It's any, even the uh, D string below it. Do you see the strings themselves? When you take these off, these strings are elixir strings. So they have that coating on them. I'm not sure if these are the nano webs or, or which ones these are. Um, but you can see elixir strings have that coating and you can see how it's frayed and the reason that's frayed is because as you play of course you are putting little dents in that coating then the coating itself has a thickness and if you wear that coating completely off of a string whenever you f whenever you fret a note you are actually pressing the string down a little bit further than it normally would have to go with the coating on there um, and so it's making it further down here in addition to the fact that you have fraying there as well so the fraying here has exposed the string making it possible for you to to press down further here and then at this point you've got you've got crap dangling off the string so it's actually a hell of a lot more likely to buzz on the next fret up now the buzzing isn't too bad, but it's there enough just to kind of to kind of piss you off as you play. All right, just to show you, I'm not entirely uh, a lunatic. Uh, here is the string in question. Hear the buzz. magically stops buzzing around the around the point where you stop seeing so much fraying and then down here lower where you stop seeing much fraying about the uh, about the fifth fret and b below fourth fret actually it doesn't buzz nearly as much there either so uh, let's check it with it. I'm going to slap a new string on. There's just a regular string that's uncoated, and we'll see if it continues to do that. All right, here we are back with this guitar. Uh, same guitar, different G string. Uh, I've just put on an old um, string. Actually, this string is a little bit rusted. It's been, this thing is probably from the 70s. It's actually an old Gibson string. <laughs> it's, it's pretty close to, uh, pretty close to the right gauge. It's a, it's a G string wound. Um, but that's how old that string is, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, but anyway, here's what this one sounds like it's in the same uh, sort of fret range. Just tiny hint of buzz if you dig into it there. I'm, I mean, I'm hitting fairly hard. But 
but you're always going to have a little bit of trade-off with with between buzz and low action which is what this customer uh want, or my friend or what he wanted um was is low action on this thing so that he can do all of his bends and blues stuff on it um so yeah that's a good lesson to you if you're having problems with fret buzz and you use elixir strings um check and see if that they're not frayed in in those uh in those areas right above each of the frets you know this is one of the reasons why i don't generally gravitate toward elixirs i used to sell them when i worked at a music store um and we would order them because there were people who insisted and swore by these um, but I've never been a real huge fan. I used the Diodario um, coated strings uh, more often if I was gonna spring for coated strings. Um, but usually, you know, I didn't really find it to be all that beneficial cost-wise. If you do a cost-benefit analysis on coated strings versus just regular strings, usually the coated strings, although they do last longer, I'm not so I'm not really convinced they last long enough. Um, you know, to sort of offset the increased cost. But anyway, this is something I just want to show you because this was uh, interesting to me. Hopefully it was interesting to you. Uh, and we will see you guys later. Please hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. And you all take care.